Welcome to Black and Gold Digital Edition, a behind the scenes look at your Pittsburgh Steelers. Hi, and welcome to week 12 of our digital show. I'm Jay Pushka alongside Mike Fenner and Ken Urbanski. And guys, the Steelers had their five game unbeaten streak snapped in Los Angeles over the weekend to the Chargers. But you know what? Things are still no panic mode just yet. A lot of jumbling taking place in the AFC all together for playoff spots. But Kent, just a tough loss for the Steelers, especially for that fourth quarter performance that they had. Right. You know, and we, you know, we didn't make the trip to LA and, and, our, and, and right, you know, <laughs> that 85 nice degree would have been nice. Would, would have been yeah. nice but, uh, you know, my, I think my family would uh, much rather have me on the road with the Steelers <laughs> than sitting in the living room <laughs> watching them, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a case of woulda, shoulda, coulda. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They gave their, so them, themselves an opportunity to come out of there with a win. The defense just, you know, you gave up a big play at the end. I mean, and how many times have they done that, you know, that uh, one play just cost them all, all the work and effort it took them to get there. So, um, yeah, all is not lost. It would have been nice to come out of there with a victory, coming back from behind like that in the fourth quarter. I mean, I think it was a span of a minute, right, that all those uh, Just about. those plays happened. Yeah. They put them right back into a game, which was really exciting. So they're going to need a similar fourth quarter effort the whole entire game going into Cincinnati to pull out a win. And, Mike, what does it say about the Steelers, too? A lot of guys on the defensive side of the ball not in that contest, and yet they were right there with a chance to win the ball game. Got to give kudos to the coaching staff to get most of those guys ready and prepared for that matchup on the road. Especially when you can scheme up some pressure packages that create some turnovers because you know that's going to be the difference maker. A Danny Smith, special teams coordinator, mm -hmm. a guy that can you know scheme something up. The effort's there and the execution is there too to block a punt. And then same thing with, with Cam Hayward having the awareness to, to bat a ball way up into the air. It gives Cam Sutton the time and the presence of mind to go pick off the pass. Those two plays changed the game, obviously, mm -hmm. with the fact that they were able to flip that into 14 quick points. Then the Chargers go for it on their own side of the field, fourth and short, don't get it. <laughs> right. Pittsburgh, I mean, holy cow, that game flipped like nothing. But, uh, yeah, you, you got to be encouraged with some of those things, like you said, with a, with a lack of defensive players, especially in the secondary. A guy like Trey Norwood had a big game with seven tackles. Mm -hmm. uh, had to Cam step, Sutton was step all in. over the field. Cam Sutton, 10 tackles, the pick. Mm -hmm. Uh, without Minka Fitzpatrick, that was obviously a huge void there, and they've had some other guys that they have not had in the lineup each and every week. So they've really kind of overcome that, and you saw in spots. I mean, you know, obviously 41 points, you say, well, they couldn't play that well, but, I mean, it's a really good offensive team in their place in prime time, and they gave them a game right at the end. And no, considering no, this yeah. offense can't even score 20 or more points in yeah. an entire game, they did it in the fourth quarter by putting up 27. Right, right, right. But, you know, going back to the Chargers offense, I mean, I don't think it was their domination of the Steelers. I mean, they ran the ball against Pittsburgh. It was Herbert's legs that were killing them. Mm -hmm. Oh, no doubt. You know, I mean, yeah. I mean this, there was nobody setting the edge. I mean, he was just, you know, as soon as, soon as the, you know, everything crashed to the middle, he just ran around to the outside for a huge yardage, you yeah. know, and that's what I think what uh, what killed Pittsburgh in that game. They're going to have to you – know, but you didn't have T.J. Watt in this game. You didn't have – or um, you didn't have Joe, um, Hayden. Joe Hayden or Minka Fitzpatrick in the back there. I think those guys there changes the dynamics of that defense and, uh, and lets them do a little bit more to, to maybe stop that. So um, having those guys back in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. um, you're going to need a similar type of effort like that because um, Joe Burrow can do the same thing. So mm – -hmm. um, Back to the Steelers' offense. Najee Harris, what less than 40 yards rushing in that game? Not a good effort there. I mean, got nicked up late in the, the game yeah, too. But you, that was a brutal hit that he took too. Yeah, it should have been a penalty. I think so too. Yeah. I mean, that was a clear shot right to the to the helmet. I think he showed his frustration after that too. Was, mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, there's been similar calls on both ends of the field, you know, going on this year. So that wasn't certainly wasn't the reason the Steelers lost that game. Steelers going to have to bring a total effort in in into Cincinnati, another away game against a division rival. Speaking of which, no sooner was that game over, a lot of the players in post game are already talking about, hey, we got to get our focus back on right. Cincinnati, the whole divisional race in itself, because it's going to be Cincinnati, and then they'll be back home for Baltimore. But first mm -hmm. and foremost, it's going on the road again to Cincinnati. And this is a team that beat Pittsburgh earlier this year at Heinz Field. I mean, this is a, a team that's very formidable, and Joe Burrow. And that whole cast of characters, they're really starting to play good football, too. They're ahead of schedule. I think a lot of people thought next year was going to be the year maybe they emerge or break out. They were still kind of tooling things up at the offensive line this year. But they've overachieved to this point, and they've shown that they can contend and they can play with these guys in the AFC North. And they've got the number four rush defense in football. They showed it 
in their September 26th matchup in Pittsburgh, the 24-10 win. Najee Harris mm -hmm. was contained that day as well, and Pittsburgh threw the ball 58 times. That's not going to be the formula that mm -hmm. wins them a game in Cincinnati either. Mm -hmm. So, again, establishing the run early, keeping that balance are going to be huge and just not falling behind, obviously, on the scoreboard is going to help with that. But they've got to stay balanced early in this game because – that was a huge factor the first time these two teams play this year. And Ken, you're always on the field covering the games and shooting the, the footage and everything. And what kind of feeling did you get even back in that week three matchup of, wow, this is a different Cincinnati team that they might be pretty good right. with longevity and not just maybe a one or two week hit wonder. It is, but I mean, it was a couple of missed tackles for touchdowns. Tyler Boyd scored a touchdown, you know, um, you know, a missed tackle there. So I think the Steelers clean that up, tighten that up a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, you know, the, the, the outcome could be different. I'm kind of concerned about that offensive line kind of taking a step backwards a little bit, getting a little dinged up, Dotson not being in there, um, and being on the road where, where it's going to be loud, you know. Uh, they're, they're, they're looking to sweep the, the Steelers this year, and, and it wouldn't be why well, they've lost to them and would be three in a row. Something that hasn't happened. Which hasn't that, happened probably 1990. before. 1990. <laughs> right. That's the last time Cincinnati won a playoff game. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's, so. you're talking about a long time. Yeah. 31 so, years. Um, what I was encouraged by was Ben Roethlisberger played probably the best game of his career in San Diego. If he can continue. Los Angeles. Or, I'm sorry. I keep doing that. <laughs> Thanks for correcting me. We'll so, put it in the tip jar. Right. Absolutely. Collect it afterwards. Thank you. You got and, it. Um, I've seen the network guys do that too, so I won't <laughs> All the time. Too, right, they so. refuse to even say Los Angeles. Right, so. right. So just let it roll. Maybe, maybe by next year I'll get it. So, <laughs> so hopefully we won't play them for five years and I won't have to deal with that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if Ben can go in there and, and have a similar – did he practice? Well, you were down at practice. Did he practice? Maybe he shouldn't have practiced this whole – where do we go? And then yeah, it, it he was, didn't it practice the week Rudolph. before and stepped right in and just yeah. kind of lit it up An a observer. little. observer, yeah. So, right, so if he goes in and has a similar game and Cincinnati, I like their chances. And that's a great point with you being down at practice. What was the mood overall? I mean, you do get to the point of this part of the season that you don't need to get a lot of the reps. You just need to, you know, stay healthy, stay fresh going into these battles because every game is going to be magnified. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right. Is they're just trying to stay mentally sharp, mentally refreshed, just try to kind of reset, flush that road game, that primetime game, and just kind of get rid of that because, again, they know how important these next two games are. These are massive games. They're division games against, you know, the cream of the crop here, knowing that if they can split, they can get two, they're right in the thick of the playoff mm -hmm. race. So they, they've got a good mindset of just kind of flush that Charger game. And, you know, they gave it what they had, but these are the games that are really going to, you know, make the money. How do you see this one playing out? I really, until they do it, I, I can't see Cincinnati winning this game at home just from the standpoint of, Ben Roethlisberger's had so much success over his career in that stadium. I know, I know a lot of the attention goes to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland and how much success he's had there. But a lot of people forget they almost never lose in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh always has great success there. and they, they have to get this game, I feel, personally, because I think your back's really against the wall if you go right. home for Baltimore off of two straight losses. Uh, I think it's going to be a tight ball game. They're going to have to earn it at the end, but I think Pittsburgh comes out on top. And Kent, there's one thing for sure. Every time that these two teams play in Cincinnati, it's always entertaining, mm -hmm. and it comes down the stretch the last three or four visits. It's been very Absolutely. entertaining. Yeah, and I've been there for all of them, mm -hmm. too. So uh, I think the Steelers are going to – They all the fan base always travels real well there, and uh, so I think they're, you're, they're, they'll have that. Um, but they're going to need they're going to need a defensive effort. They they got run on a lot in in L. A. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they're going to have to tighten that up a little bit. Yeah. Middle linebackers really are going to have to step up. I think De Devin Bush was out of position a lot in that mm -hmm. game and was just chasing guys down and uh, instead of you know um, instead of covering. So if they can do that, tighten that up, get, you know, with Minka back and Joe, is Joe, I don't know, is Joe Hayden back on the? I think it's going to be 50-50. 50-50. Right so yeah. if, if they get some of those guys back and TJ c can play and, and put, put a pass rush on, I, I, I like their chances in this game. You know, I think it's still tight. The Steelers haven't, they play everybody tight. It's mm -hmm. going to come down, it's going to come down to a three, uh, three point, you know, six point at most game as, as they all have. So yeah, there's no blow, blowouts by any means. Yeah. In the AFC yeah. North. All nail biters. I'm mm -hmm. going to, I'm going to need some therapy <laughs> after this year's over. Well, we're making the road trip, so we'll have a lot of time to, to decompress right, to right. and from the game. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you're driving. I might be drinking. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Coffee. Guys, thanks so much. And thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks for watching. 
Join us again next week for Black and Gold Digital Edition.